Welcome friends to another r slash am I the jerk here video. Would you be the jerk for telling your girlfriend to move back to her own country? We'll find out, but first a story from bell number 1177. Am I the jerk for holding a grudge against my dad who took my step siblings to Paris, but not me? A few weeks ago, I learned from my stepbrother's TikTok that my dad, stepmom, and two stepbrothers are in Paris. I was staying with my mom at the time. I'm female, 16, and would have loved to be there, but they didn't even tell me they were going. I immediately sent a text to my dad asking if they're enjoying their time in Paris, and despite reading it, he didn't reply until late at night. Then he tried to play dumb and said it's great and he wished I could be there. Yeah, me too. So I reply that he could have taken me, and he said it wasn't possible, and we'll talk about it later. So when they returned, I told them that I'm hurt, that they didn't take me. My dad took me aside and told me that their finances are very tight. This vacation was a gift from stepmom's parents and they only bought it for my dad, their daughter, and their own grandchildren and not me. He reminded me that I shouldn't act in an entitled way. They were effectively guests. Even though their grandparents weren't there, they just paid for it. And I wasn't invited, so I shouldn't act in an entitled way. I wasn't convinced. They could have refused to go without me, paid for me themselves, gone somewhere cheaper, stayed a little less longer, or asked my mom to pitch in, and she would have. Me not being there was exclusionary. If this was only about money, they could have made it work, so I told my dad that I was disappointed in him. So came last night and my stepmom's parents came over for dinner. The subject of the vacation came up and everyone was talking about it and I was just sitting there being quiet until I thanked them for doing such a nice thing for the family while my dad looked at me in a frowny way. Everyone went quiet. My dad tried explaining that I should have understood that this was a very expensive gift. I'm acting like an entitled brat and should go to my room if I can't behave myself. I said it doesn't seem like I belong anyway and told them to enjoy your family dinner and left. Later, the grandmother came to my room and tried explaining that they gifted this to their grandchildren and couldn't afford to include me as well. She said they initially only had the budget for three, their daughter and grandchildren, but they stretched themselves to four to include my dad as well. But while they wished they could have done it for me, they could not really stretch it to five. So I told her that my problems with my dad, and I have no beef with her, but she doesn't get to act like she cares about me either, and it's okay. I was like, I'm a stranger to you and you don't care about me, so have some balls, put your big girl pants on and wear it on your sleeve, and asked her to get the freak out of my room. She left and I heard her telling my dad that I was very rude to her, so I'm grounded until further notice. Am I acting like an entitled brat, and am I the jerk in this situation? I think OP's not the jerk here. I think at the very least, if there was no possible way for the dad to ever take OP on this, they should have had the common courtesy to at least tell OP, right? To give them a heads up, they shouldn't have found out that their whole extended dad and step family were in Paris literally through their step siblings' TikTok. Clearly they don't give too much of a crap if they're not even going to tell OP at all. And do you guys think that what OP said, while probably being true, was just too harsh to the grandmother? I mean, I think OP was dropping some truth bombs. The fact of the matter is, the grandma came to OP to explain they couldn't afford for OP, and they're like trying to weirdly suggest that they do care, but in reality, they honestly don't. And it's like this weird fake act that's meagerly being offered up. And OP said straight up to their face, no, I get it. You don't give a crap. So the least you can do is just own it and told them to get the freak out of the room. Is that uncalled for? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Our next story is from Leather Example 4418. Am I the jerk for preventing my husband from throwing his daughter an engagement party? My husband's daughter, we'll call her Clara, recently got engaged and he wanted to throw them a party. This is important to him as he feels our daughter together got a better birthday parties and this is a point of contention with him. I wasn't even around when she was having these lackluster parties so I don't know how it's my fault but somehow it is. At first I agreed but when I thought about it the groom's mother is banned from our house. She called me a who are to my mutual friends and she got drunk at our house and announced that we're bad people for getting married and having a baby because she would never have done that to her son. 
and she bragged about how she never introduced a single boyfriend to her son because he wasn't okay with it. That's her choice, but personally, I don't think it's healthy to let a child run your life to that extent. She also breastfed her daughter at a dinner party, which was fine, but caused her to spill food all over my couch. When I was annoyed, she told people I'm anti-breastfeeding and made a joke about how Clara will never want to bring her future children to our house. Needless to say, she's banned. My husband already told Clara about the party. He then had to backtrack and explain that while he still wants to throw her a party, the groom's mother cannot come. Clara got irritated and said she didn't want the party then and that he was making her event about me. She said I should have thicker skin and not care what this woman says and cited that her fiancé offered to pay for our couch. My husband asked me to reconsider and I said no. There really isn't time to book a venue so we're just going to cancel. He's now mad at me and thinks I should let it go this one time. I am just not okay with being disrespected or having someone say my daughter should not exist right in front of my daughter. Admittedly, I think this lady seems like a total pain to be around. Not pleasant, says some pretty intolerable things. That said, this is a very short event for the kid, and I would imagine it's only going to be contained within the confines of how long that party lasts. It's a really big moment for Clara, and they want their mom there. I think for the sake of Clara, you can put up with it for one night. It's not like the day after, or the week after, or the month after that, that you're going to have to interact with her at all. You don't even have to interact with her on the night, just coexist. Let Clara have their big moment. Our next story is from Throwaway Garden Thief. Am I the jerk for confronting my neighbor who's obviously stealing produce from my garden? This spring, a young woman, let's call her Kristen, moved into the house next door to me. She owns some sort of catering business for weddings and runs an Instagram account about food. We live in a semi-remote area, about 15 minutes out of a small town. During the pandemic, I got very into gardening and love my thriving vegetable and herb garden. I tend to it very carefully, and I love that I can feed my husband and kids with food I've grown. This summer, the produce has begun disappearing. Some of my tomatoes, squash, eggplants, and herbs will disappear overnight. I see no signs of animals chewing them. No vegetables disappeared last summer. Obviously, someone is taking them. Kristen is the nearest house to mine. The other nearest are a bit of a walk down the road. And she's right next door. And I find it very suspicious that they began disappearing right after she moved in. I even checked her Instagram and saw her posting photos of food this very week, featuring the exact produce that's gone missing from my garden. Tomatoes, zucchini, eggplant, herbs. I confronted her about this yesterday evening, and she became very, very defensive. She said I was crazy, and that she had no reason to steal from me, as there's a farmer's market right down the road and she grows her own windowsill herbs and has a supplier for her business. She even had the audacity to brag about how much money she makes, saying that her business brings in good money and that she would have no need to steal. From her defensiveness and this level of bragging, it seems obvious that she's lying. Things got ugly and she slammed her door in my face, which to me seems like further proof of guilt. Am I the jerk? Should I have gone about this differently? She is clearly stealing from me and clearly lying about it. I think the problem here, no matter how definitive OP thinks this is or not, they don't actually have legitimate proof here. In this day and age, I would say it's more accessible than ever to get awesome fresh produce like that. And I would say before OP goes to their doorstep and starts pointing their finger and accusing them of stealing, they should have gone for a more proof related approach, like, I know it costs money, but getting a camera that can actually watch their produce, you know, trying to get a legitimate record, video, snapshot, something that shows Kristen in their garden picking their fruit. Because otherwise, I feel like it's the raccoon at 3am. So I think OP's the jerk until proven right. Our next story is from throwaway 0599456629. Am I the jerk for breaking my promise to the family by telling my friend that my sister was planning to take their daughter outside the country permanently? My sister has a five-year-old girl with my friend. We were all at high school when she got pregnant. 
At the time, they'd been dating for just over a month. They broke up shortly after getting into a huge argument. Still, he brought his parents to our house, and they told us they'll support my sister whatever her decision, and that their son wants to be involved if she decides to keep it. My sister's now engaged to a different guy. Three days ago, she informed me that she was going to spend a two-week vacation in France with her fiancé and daughter, and asked if I could take a document to my friend to sign, allowing my niece to travel internationally. In my country, you can't travel with your kid internationally without the other parent's approval, which she signed with no problem. The next day, I was talking with my mom, and she let it slip after mentioning something about schools in France that my sister was intending to move there permanently. It turned out the whole family knew about this except for me and my niece. They kept begging me not to tell him, but still couldn't manage to give any reasonable answers on why. To get them to stop, I promised them that I won't tell them anything. Of course, there was no way in heck that I wasn't going to tell him, because even though he doesn't have a good relationship with my sister, he is a good guy, a great dad to my niece, and she loves him more than anything in the world. When I told him, he went straight to the police and called me afterwards because they wanted to take my statement. A few hours later, his lawyer filed an emergency motion with the court to annul the document. Yesterday morning, my sister came to the house screaming at me and calling me all sorts of names. Apparently, the police came to her place bringing a court order and informed her that she can't take my niece out of the country and in case she tried, she'll be stopped by the authorities at the airport. At that moment, I've become the family's number one enemy. My older brother and other sister said that they were disappointed at me for breaking my promise and putting an outsider over family. My parents were so furious and, after a lot of insults, told me to pack my crap and leave. The only person who tried to calm things was my aunt, but she quickly stopped after seeing how angry everyone was. Personally, I feel very firmly that OP is not the jerk. Pretty clearly in this family, OP was the only one thinking how the five-year-old girl would feel. It may very well be a better situation for the parents of the five-year-old girl, but that kid still deserves to have their father in their life. And lying to them and forever trying to rip them away, and vice versa, trying to rip them away from the father, it's just not cool. This next story is from Fair is Not Fair. Am I the jerk for refusing to punish or allow my wife to punish our son? This all started back in March. My son's best friend turned 13. In his family, 13th birthday is a huge deal. In addition to a massive party, which all four of us were invited to, his parents also took him to Disney World. They invited my son to attend as well. My wife was hesitant to consent to this. She said it was unfair to allow our son to go when our nine-year-old daughter can't, especially since she loves Disney and princesses. I said that our kids won't always have the exact same opportunities and if we set a precedent here, we'll have to stick to it if and when our daughter gets a similar opportunity. So we'd just be punishing both our children needlessly. My wife reluctantly agreed that we should allow our son to go. I gave our son money to buy his sister souvenirs. He did, and his friend's parents even bought extra stuff for him to give to her. Still, when she saw him come back wearing a Star Wars shirt with the Mickey hat and the trading pin lanyard, she burst into tears. My wife later said we made a huge mistake and never should have let him go. I mistakenly thought that all of that was behind us. Now, we're not well off financially, but my brother-in-law is. And he invited all of us to visit a beach house he rented for a summer send-off. My wife told me she wants to have our son stay with my dad and just take our daughter to even the score. I told my wife that isn't happening. We are their parents. We can't favor one child over the other. Not being invited to the birthday trip of a kid you barely know is in no way comparable to being left out of a family vacation, and I'm shocked that she would even suggest such a thing. I refuse to allow it. Now my wife is angry, but I don't care. I'm not punishing my son for being lucky. Am I the jerk? I think OP's definitely not the jerk, and I think the wife has some kind of mental hurdle that they need to somehow figure out a way to leap over. I don't blame them for feeling bad for their daughter at all, because you hate to see them heartbroken, and you would love to see them go to Disney and enjoy themselves too, but I think she really needs to keep focused that this isn't something that the parents did on their own accord at all. 
In this situation, it was the friend of the son who offered to take him along. There was never anything involving the parents, there was never anything involving the daughter. There is no score to even out, and trying to leave your son behind out of a family vacation? There's some real issues going on here. I would even say it might be crossing into favoritism territory. This next story is from TA, tired of my mother-in-law. Am I the jerk for returning the money to my mother-in-law in front of everyone embarrassing her? Me, 28-year-old female, and my fiancé, 27-year-old male, are getting married in March. I come from an upper class family and my fiance is lower middle class. This is a delicate matter for his family. Despite me being able to pay all the costs of the wedding, my parents gave the equivalent of 70% of the value of the wedding as a gift, which would be around 30,000 fictitious value. And fortunately, my parents didn't use this gift as a form of wanting to control everything at the party. When my fiance's parents learned that my parents had given this gift, My fiancé and I didn't mention it. My sister-in-law snitched on them. They decided to give their gift as well and gave $3,000, an amount for which I was very grateful to have received. And I deeply regret doing this, especially for my mother-in-law. I don't plan on having a traditional wedding party. My dress won't be white, lilac. There will be no religious ceremony and it will be a party for only 30 guests. And my fiancé agrees and supports this. This bothers my mother-in-law a lot, especially since the dress not being white. Over time, she gave up on imposing the idea of a big party and not having a religious ceremony, but the dress is something she annoys me on too much. And it continues even though I snapped on her or my fiancé tells her to stop. Because of that, we're in little contact with her. Yesterday, it was my sister-in-law's birthday, and I went with my husband. Obviously, my mother-in-law was there. Not even five minutes after I stepped into the party, she started again with the idea of me having to wear white because it's an important tradition. And it got to the point where she was talking to her sisters about how this new generation doesn't respect traditions and that she was sorry slash afraid of these new parties. I had my limit when she spoke loud and clear that in her time, the bride and groom respected their parents' opinions even more so if they helped pay for the wedding. I was very angry and said, enough, I can't take it. It's not worth listening to other people's crap for this money. I had the money in my pocket and was going to deposit that same amount in the bank later, but I gave up and gave it to her in front of everyone. And I added that now she won't say anything because she's not helping. This generated a confusion of tremendous proportions. My fiancé's entire family fighting on me, saying that I humiliated her in front of everyone and demeaned the amount they gave. Well, I had to leave early so it wouldn't get any worse. My fiancé understands why I did it, but said it wasn't my best moment, and I could have done it in private and not in front of everyone. Am I the jerk? I think OP is not the jerk, specifically because when they say, oh, well, you could have done that in private and not in front of everyone, why does the mother-in-law get a pass for having their crappy behavior in front of everyone and not in private either? Everybody else at that table or at that party were more than happy to just see and witness and hear this mother-in-law go on and on about, oh, how the wedding should be a certain way and oh, I'm paying for it so I should have a say, blah, blah, blah. No, it's only when OP gets fed up at that attempt to control their wedding and returns the attempted leverage that it went too far. They can all keep clutching their pearls if they think that was too much. Our next story is from Panda958. Am I the jerk for no longer being the maid of honor for my sister's wedding after her fiancé humiliated me? My sister is getting married soon to Nino. As part of the pre-wedding celebrations, our family is visiting Nino's family in Italy. My dad is very good friends with Nino's dad and uncle as they all grew up together, so this isn't our first time meeting most of them. Nino has a cousin, Luca, who I've made an enemy out of when I was nine because I told our dads that he pushed me into the water when I actually slipped and he got into a crap load of trouble. I haven't seen him since we were children so I thought he would be over it by now but he very clearly wasn't and seemed to hate my guts judging by how he looked at me. He's going to be Nino's best man and since I was supposed to be the maid of honor, 
I thought it would be good for us to put the past behind us, so I tried to apologize to him multiple times in English, but he acted like he couldn't understand and only ever spoke Italian around me. I asked Nino to translate my apology for me, but he told me that it would mean more if I said it to him myself in Italian to show that I was genuinely sorry. He taught me how to say what I wanted to say, but Luca was never alone, so I was finding it hard to find a chance to apologize. One day he was sitting with a group outside, and Nino told me to just say it in front of everybody since Luca was avoiding me. I said it and everyone who spoke Italian found it hilarious. I had no idea what was so funny until Luca asked me in English to repeat what I said. I tried to apologize in English, but he told me to say it in Italian again. After I said it, he stood up and told me to come inside with him and he would screw my brains out. I was angry and embarrassed, so I told him to stop being disgusting, and he told me that was what I just said to him. Nino found it hilarious, as did everybody else. I yelled at him and so did my sister. I ended up telling them I wouldn't be the maid of honor anymore because the groom was a jerk. My sister is begging me not to drop out of her wedding and has told Nino to apologize multiple times, but I still don't want to do it or be around Luca and Nino more than necessary. Am I the jerk? I legitimately know that there's a good population out there that are going to say, oh, it was just a joke, get over it. But I'm personally of the opinion that this kind of thing is just not funny. I think OP's not the jerk, and unless Nino comes and properly seems to honestly look OP in the face and apologize legitimately, that OP would not be the jerk for being unrelenting on this decision. Our next story is from Elope Through Always, DHF. Am I the jerk for wanting space after our daughter eloped? I, 47-year-old male, and my wife, 53-year-old female, are having some troubles and a friend suggested posting here. Our daughter, Tony, 24, decided to elope, and we found out through a Facebook post. We always had a good relationship, so this was a huge shock to us. It hurt us a lot that she didn't tell us she was going to marry, or that we could see her getting married at all. It also doesn't help that who she married we met once, and only dated for a year. Both my wife and I are hurt. We saw Tony today and told her we needed some space. She seemed shocked and asked why. We told her it's because we're hurt that she eloped. Tony got mad and told us that it was her wedding and she can do what she wants. My wife told her yes, it's her wedding, but there's still consequences with her eloping. Tony called us unsupportive jerks and left. I think OP is not the jerk. I think although Tony doesn't necessarily need to feel any guilt or ownership over making you feel this way, I think OP and their partner are more than justified to feel some kind of remorse or discomfort with how everything went down. You know, it's one of those situations where you can't help but just feel that twinge in your heart where you're like, They didn't want to tell me? I had to find out through a Facebook post? But again, it's not something the kid should actually have to feel guilt or responsibility for causing. Our next story is from Sudden Slip Dress. Am I the jerk for not changing my dress that the bride picked out at my brother's wedding? I'm 19 year old female. My brother and his now wife got married last month. And apparently I caused an issue so disastrous that it's being talked about a month later. I'm not super close with my brother's wife, Jess, but close enough that we talk sometimes. I hate wearing dresses due to personal issues, so Jess helped me pick one that was in my style and comfort. It was a dark green dress with black lace covering it and spaghetti straps. Jess said I could wear Doc Martens and keep my piercings in. I only have like five. Looking at myself all dolled up was the first time in forever that I actually liked my appearance. Everything is fine until the reception. My brother comes up to me and tells me I need to change. I ask why. He says Jess is upset that I've upstaged her. I was super confused. She picked a dress. I asked what the issue is. Well, apparently the dress is more fitted than Jess initially realized and was insecure about her body. Here's where I might be the jerk. I refuse to get changed. I told my brother he's marrying a model, not that they can't have insecurities but that I'm sure my 5 foot 1, 180 pound self looks like a goblin next to her. He told me to get changed or leave. I ended up sitting outside the venue with all the stoners, so I had a fun time anyway. 
It's been a month and my brother still isn't over it. He called me selfish even though I left. I tried to apologize to Jess but she told me not to worry about it but her tone also seems like she's annoyed. The kicker is Jess's aunt has been making comments about it online which hasn't made things any easier. Am I the jerk? I think OP is not the jerk and they were in a lose situation to begin with. This outfit wasn't ever their idea. They end up wearing it based on the suggestion from the bride and then get utterly chewed out and spat out by their entire family for wearing that outfit. What more do you want OP to do? Imagine picking out an outfit for them and then at the wedding essentially saying, hey you look too good, can you get more ugly? Our next story is from Throwaway5. Am I the jerk for kicking my mom out? My children, 18 year old male, 16 year old male and 15 year old female are all extremely talented. My eldest is a ballet dancer, second is an athletic swimmer, third is a violin genius. I'm so proud of them and all of their achievements and I have photos, medals, trophies, etc. all over the house. I don't think this is weird or anything out of the ordinary. My mother's visiting and nothing significant happened. My husband and I decided to take the kids out. We asked my mom if she wanted to come, but she said she was tired and wanted to rest. When we came back, we noticed that a framed photo of my eldest son on stage, plus a few of his dance medals, two of my second son's swim meet medals and another framed photo, but of my daughter playing violin and one of her certificates were gone. My mom quickly admitted that she took them down because she felt like I was showing off too much and that we were coming off as obsessed and snobby. Apparently, we're being tacky? To make matters worse, she decided to make fun of my eldest son for doing ballet as well. My husband asked her if she was being serious, but she just told us that she'll give the things back once she leaves. I started laughing in disbelief and told her to give the things back immediately as she's leaving now. She was upset. She gasped and told me that I have no right to kick her out as her daughter and that I'm being disrespectful. But I told her that she was the one who disrespected me by doing something so ridiculous. I mean, who does that? My mom left and did give back the things she hid but cursed me and my husband the whole time. She even made a Facebook post about how disrespectful and ungrateful your own children are. My sister is horrified that I kicked her out as she's our mother, older, and a woman in an unfamiliar town. But my mom's always traveling, so I don't know why it's such a big deal. Am I the jerk? Mother or not, if somebody comes into your house and starts hiding things that you had hanging on the walls, especially all of these mementos from your kids' various achievements and great moments, That person deserves to get shot out of a cannon out of your house and somewhere else. You could have framed pictures of stick figures that you drew while you were drunk framed all around your house, and they would still be as much of a jerk if they went and took those things and hid them. You don't go around hiding people's things and taking them off the walls in someone else's house, especially the kids' stuff. And our final story of the day is from Jingle Balls in Your Mouth. Am I the jerk for telling my mother her children aren't mine? I, 17-year-old female, have two younger siblings, 14-year-old female and 13-year-old male. My mother works from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. weekdays. When she gets off, she goes straight to our grandmother's house or her boyfriend's house and doesn't come home till 10 or 11 p.m. On weekends, she stays out at night. Whenever I ask to go out, which is rare, it's a no. Everyone has to come to my home, but then she complains about me inviting everyone over. I work a part-time summer job. I get paid enough for my needs and to put money aside for my upcoming senior events. When I get paid, I put about 50 to 75% of my money aside and buy whatever I need. I usually have enough to last me till the next time I get paid. My mother and I get paid the same week. She buys food with her first paycheck of the month, and I buy food with my second paycheck. My mother buys mostly frozen food, junk food, and canned goods. I, on the other hand, buy fruits and vegetables, sometimes snacks. So about three days ago, my mother bought the food she usually bought and left. I put away everything and continued my night. The next night, I went downstairs to find 90% of the food my mother bought was gone. I complained to my mother and she did nothing. I started to crave teriyaki and shrimp fried rice so that's exactly what I bought. 
About 45 minutes later, it came and my siblings were complaining about how hungry they were. I told them to tell their mother, not me. A few minutes later, my mother came into my room screaming at me for not buying my siblings dinner. I told her they were her children, not mine, and I don't have to buy them anything. She told me to remember that and walked out. I shrugged my shoulders and continued to eat. Yesterday, my mother took my siblings and I to the mall. I went on my own as usual and bought some pink Crocs. My sister found me and told me that my mother said that I have to buy her something. I told her I didn't have to buy her anything because she isn't my child. She left and told my mother. My mother called me and just whisper yelled at me and hung up. I checked out and went to meet back up with my mom at our usual spot. After about 15 minutes, I called my mom to see where they were. She told me she left and to find my own way home. I had my best friend take me home. When I got in, no one had said a word to me. Am I the jerk for saying what I said? I think OP's not the jerk here, and I think kind of what OP's doing here is kind of really great. This mom clearly wants to push way too much responsibility on their oldest kid. And OP is straight up saying, no, 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 you're not going to get away with doing that to me. It might mean that at 18 you get kicked out right away, but honestly, considering how they're treating you, you might kind of just prefer that anyways. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another Am I the Jerk here story that was absolutely crazy, click on that left video. Or if you missed my latest video, check out the one on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.